Hi, I'm Peter, and this is Go Verb Noun. Hello and welcome to part two of my interview with Ollie Leonard of Philosophy Tube. If you haven't seen part one yet, go ahead and check it out. Link over here somewhere. Go ahead and click it. If you're viewing on mobile, it'll be down in the description. Uh, otherwise, you can just go to my channel and check out all of my interviews. But mainly look for part one of this one. Uh, in that first part, we talked to Ollie mainly about Philosophy Tube specifically, uh, what his channel does, how it works, all that jazz. In the second part, we're going to talk a little bit more about YouTube in general and being a person who creates things online for others, uh, as well as just general YouTube stuff. So if that interests you, go ahead and uh, keep watching. Where do you interact with your audience at? Um, I don't have a Tumblr because I, I don't know how Tumblr works and I don't know how Reddit works. And I, I want to learn um, and I will at some point when, I, when I'm not so crazy busy, but I don't, I don't have a Tumblr or, and I'm not on Reddit, but I do do a lot of Twitter and a lot of Facebook and the comment section is still my main place. And, Twitter's good if you're just saying, oh, hey, have you seen this, or have you thought about this, or you're just firing jokes at people and chatting. Um, if you're actually making a serious argument, 140 characters is, is quite strict, and it's tough to get across all the nuances of an argument. But YouTube comments are great, um, so I do do a lot of chatting with people there. And Facebook as well, the, the fans who um, follow me on Facebook are usually really engaged and really active, so... I like to try and have as much interaction as I can with people. And people email me stuff as well, so have you thought about this, and I like chatting to people over email, because it's always really nice for people send things in, um, and the YouTube messages as well. In fact, um, yesterday, I didn't realize that YouTube had moved a lot of the direct messages, um, and I thought, oh, I haven't got any direct YouTube messages, and oh, I wonder what that is, and then I found they moved them to a different folder, and I had like three months of backed up fan mail, including some speaking invitations that I hadn't, and I was like, oh, no, 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 I really like those. Um, so yeah, it was kind of a whole backed up stuff, so I used the YouTube messages in the comments and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of, I think it's important um, for the way I, I like to run my channel is to interact with people because it's not just me lecturing and saying this is what Kant thought and this is what Descartes thought and now this is what you must think. You know, what I'm trying to do is say, no, you know, here are the arguments, what do you think, how do you interpret them, have you got any counterpoints because, you know, people, it's, it's a team sport really philosophy. What do you feel are some of your responsibilities as someone who puts stuff on the internet for others to consume? Uh, first and foremost, to check my facts, really, you know, make sure that I'm um, representing people correctly. You know, if I'm saying this philosopher made this argument, you know, actually read the paper and check and um, make sure that I have made good notes and make sure that I know what I'm talking about. Um, that's, that's the biggest thing, really. Um, I also, I don't like to patronise people on YouTube. I don't say, you know, this is the argument, and this is what it says, and maybe this, and this is kind of what it is, and here's a patronising analogy. You know, I like to keep it factual and talk to people as if as if they are philosophers, and if they're capable of understanding it, which they certainly are, and I've proved that they are. So um, I keep it on the level, really, uh, and make sure that what I'm saying is is at least a representation of the person who said it. It's, it's not always what I think. Um, you know, if, if I do a video on Barclay's idealism, it's not necessarily because I'm an idealist or because I think Barclay was right. But um, I usually try and keep it factual. And that's the most, and that's, I think, probably for my subject, when there aren't many people on YouTube doing it, that's important. Because there might not be a lot of other sources that people can go and fact check what I'm saying. Um, and there are some people who make philosophy videos and they make mistakes in those videos. And I'm like... That's not good, because there aren't that many sources that people can go and check. And certainly if the resources that I'm using are papers and academic journals, you know, often people might, that might be behind a paywall, so people might not be able to go and check the way I can, because my university gives me access to those things. So just getting the facts straight, really, and, um, and you know, treating people as if they are intelligent and capable of understanding, which is always good. You, know, you don't, don't want to talk down to my audience, because I, I'm kind of asking for their help when I make a video. It's like, here's a... Question, here's an idea, um, if I have an idea about it, I'll be like, here's my thoughts on it, is it right? And if I don't have an idea, I'll be like, oh, here are all the issues, what are you guys thinking? Let's, let's kick it around a bit. So, uh, yeah, facts checking and respecting the audience, I think, are, are some of my, my top priorities. Cool. What do you love about doing what you do? I, it would be really, really hard to pick one thing about doing that, that I love. Um, I guess just purely from the, from the selfish side of it, making something that's sort of eight or ten minutes long that takes you a whole day to make. Um, when you stand there and there's a finished product, 
and you see it, and it's got flaws, but it's got some things you really like. There's a, there's a pride in creating something, um, but then when other people see it and start interacting with it, that's like a that's a whole other level. When people say, "Hey, this is really good. I really like this." When people take the time to write in and say, "I really like what you do," and um, sometimes people say, "Like I, I don't know what to say. I don't have a, a comment like or an argument. I just wanted to say." Thank you for what you do, and uh, I showed my friend this, and and or um, I get some of people like um you you know you've inspired me to go and study philosophy at university, and this is really useful. Uh, that is that is really really cool. Um, I like it when people tell me where they're from as well. You know, I get people saying, "I'm I'm down in Australia." I'm like, "That's so cool that you're on the other side of the world, and and you're doing all of this." Um, and I guess yeah, that that the interacting with people and getting people's feedback, you know, positive and negative, is is really nice. You know, if somebody takes the time to say, um, even if they take the time to say, you know, I didn't like it because I thought you didn't do this well, and you're like, okay, well, you know, at least you took the time to tell me, and um, that's really cool. And especially if there's somebody that you already look up to, um, without meaning to belittle the, the people on YouTube who who just comment and say thanks very much for what you're doing, but um when somebody uh, who, you, who you look up to, whose channel you watch, says, hey, I, I really like what you do, this is really cool. Um, not even educational channels, there are some channels that aren't educational, but I can just say, like, someone said, liked your video, I'm like, yes, yes! When I did my video on, uh, on YouTube poops, there were some YouTube poopers that I watched who were like, yeah, I like this video, and I was like, yes, get in! Um, and, you know, sometimes it says, Mike Rignetta liked your comment, I'm like, yeah, damn right you did. <laughs> Um, that's cool. And collaborating with other people all around the world is cool as well. I've done um, a few collabs now. One with uh, the Vic Crit guy that was really cool. Um, I did one with, I did one a couple of days ago with This Exists. That was awesome. They wrote to me and, and were like, yeah, we really like what you do. Can we do something together? And I was like, oh, okay, who are you? And I was like, what? You've got like 44,000 subscribers. Why are you talking to me? Like, I'm, I'm nobody. This is ridiculous. Um, but yeah, we did. And it was really, really fun. Um, I did one with Emily as well, which is absolutely super. That was the first one I did. That was really cool. So just interacting with people and being part of that community um, is is just, it's so much fun. It really is. You know, it's like having friends all over the world who like what you do and, and comment on it and are nice about it. It's it's really, really good. <laughs> it is. Yeah. yeah. And when they learn as well, when people are learning things, sometimes I get comments, people say, um, I used to think this and I've watched your video and I just realised that everything I've thought was just like totally totally wrong, like I, I was wrong this whole time and, and here you are, well, I'd never thought about this and now I'm thinking about it a whole lot more. Those, those are the comments I really, really like. It's like, yeah, because that's the amazing feeling of learning something. People are like, I never thought this before. I had one a while ago where um, somebody said, I just found your channel and I realised that what I thought was philosophy this whole time was just a sort of pseudo-spiritual beard-stroking nonsense. People go, hmm, yeah, what are we all here for? And I, I, that, I thought that was it, and now I found your channel, and it's not. It's like really analytic, intellectual, and I love it. And I was like, yes, we've learned something. We've made a connection. There's been a result. I've achieved what I was trying to do. And those are the comments I really like. Joke. I can, I can do that. That's... Whoa, how did you do that? <laughs> what is this sorcery? I'll do like a 10-minute video on this next time. I'll just teach you how to do that. Yes. <laughs> That's, that's a gift right there. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, yes! Yes! I've never been gift in my life! That's, that actually, to be honest, that is one of the moments I really, really love when somebody takes something that you've done and alters it or, or does something in another way. So I, I've, I've never been gift, um, but a couple of people have made YouTube poops out of the video I made on YouTube poops. And I was like, that is, that is so, so cool when somebody takes that and... and changes it and puts their own spin on it. Or when somebody says, or somebody, somebody does a reply video and, and says, oh, hey, I saw this guy's video. And that got me thinking about this. That's, that is so cool when you see that you've not just inspired somebody to think, but to make something of themselves. So if, if anybody does want to gift that, that would be really, really cool. Just send it to me as well. Do you have any questions for other YouTubers? Well, I guess, yeah, one thing I have noticed is that uh, Certainly for educational content, it seems like fewer people, fewer of the very successful ones, fewer of them do what I did, which was, you know, start from the very ground and build it up, you know, start filming in your bedroom on a, on a camera made of wood, and then you like slowly build up and up and up and get better. It seems like a lot of them don't do that. It seems like a lot of them come right out of the gate, just like, boom, here we go, here's a really professional finished product, like PBS Edition did that. SciShow and Crash Course, tons of people did that, um, and you know they, they come straight out the gate with backing and and um, so I guess 
one of my questions would be, how are you finding people to back you up on this unproven project that you've done? Where you're just like, yeah, I want to do this. Who's, who's going, yeah, all right, we'll do that. Yeah, yeah. Who, who are those people? How do I get in touch with them? That'd be really good. It seems like a lot of people are, are just, they start with a professional finished product. And that's something that I'm having to claw my way towards very, very slowly. And have, you know, inched towards over the last year and a half getting slowly, slowly better. Um, and people start with like whole teams of people behind them. Like um, you were saying before that you've met SciShow and Crash Course and they're like whole teams of people. I'm like, what, where did you, where did you get a team? People have like teams of editors, like PBS Digital have, have teams of people who edit for them. I'm like, how did you, how did you find these people? Where, where are they? And, and what on earth are you paying them in? Because I, I don't have a team of editors. Some people, Sometimes I get commenters who saying, oh, you know, your, your editor's done this. And I'm like, what do you mean my editor's done this? It's me. Like, I wrote it, I presented it, I filmed it. I don't even have anyone behind the camera like you to talk to. So if the camera shifts focus and ruins it, I, I can't tell until I'm watching the rest of the recording and I have to go back and film it all again. So, I mean, you know, I guess my question to other YouTubers would be, how on earth are you just coming straight out the gate with this incredible stuff? What's the, what's the one weird tip learned by a local mom that, <laughs> to, to improve the YouTube videos that I just didn't know about? Yeah. The Vlog Brothers hate her. One weird tip discovered by local mom to, to make incredible YouTube videos just without without seemingly trying. I mean, of course, it's a lot of effort, but yeah, yeah. yeah. How how have people seem to just um, start with the cheat codes, really? Yeah, yeah basically. Not not in a kind of jealous way. No, but, like, but just in a sort of in a sort of curious way. Like, how did you? Who are the institutions that are that are behind this? Um, but I guess you know you need you need a variety. You know, you need some people who are coming straight out the doors with. Kind of, hey, we're, we're pros, and then just to make it interesting, you need a few people who sort of work their way up and so on. I guess, yeah, it's cool. Um, it's cool when you see YouTubers like that who started, and um, so like even PewDiePie started in, in his room, and that's, that's quite an inspiring thing, really. And I think that probably contributes to a lot of what we were talking about before with that sort of gold rush mentality that people go in and try. And I think it's good that some people are still able to kind of slowly learn and. and work their way up and kind of maybe not exactly in the manner I have but something similar you know, it's good that YouTube isn't just for pros it's good that anybody can get into it and try it um, and that's actually a, that's actually something that um, occurred to me when Emily was doing her um, LFVR project and she was talking about um, having the, the Oculus Rift as the online video player and I, I was thinking about um, to what extent is having really expensive technology like that going to benefit newbies coming in and doing online video? If it's only going to be people who can afford LVR headsets and so on, um, then when everyone inevitably switches from YouTube to LVR, because it'll be a huge success because it's amazing, then how is that going to impact the sort of videos that get made? And in particular, the topics that get chosen um, and the issues that get talked about. But yeah, yeah, it's interesting. All right, guys, so that's part two. Uh, as a wrap-up discussion, I want to ask you guys, Based on what you have seen from my channel, from my interviews, uh, and just what you've seen on the interweb at large, can you think of a good answer to Ollie's question regarding like how all of these YouTubers like Hank Green and Emily Grassley, like how did they get the capital that they have to make such great shows? Let me know in the comments below or hit me up on Tumblr, Twitter, Instagram. Nobody ever contacts me on Instagram. And let me know your thoughts. All right, so that's all I got for now. Until next time. I will see you later. Bye.